I have been working on a long-term project making 3D printed tableware, the sort that you would eat food with to talk about 3D printing and food safe 3D prints. This is not that video. In this video, I want to talk about the design process of making things that are shaped like we traditionally think of when we think of tableware and the difficulties that I had in doing that. Also some things that I learned and relearned about the way that some common 3D printers work and how that affects the 3D printing process. And I do have to touch on just a little bit the discussion about 3D prints and food safe 3D prints. And I need to say that by default, no. 3D prints are probably not food safe. So if you want to do this experiment and if you want to 3D print these, do not under you know any circumstances use them to actually eat with at least until I'm done using them to actually eat with so that I can tell you how you might be able to make your 3D prints food safe enough. But that is a discussion for a future video. Let's talk about the shape of a spoon. In designing this spoon, I had to think about orientation because I'm always trying to design for supportless 3D printing. But uh, it's difficult with the shape of a spoon. If I took this and simply laid it down on the build plate, there'd be a lot of area underneath it that we would have to add supports to. I suppose I could just print it flat and come up with a new sort of tableware that works from the flatness, but there's that curve on the neck that's designed specifically so that you can hold it in a natural way and get it into your mouth at a natural angle. Oh, all of this would be very difficult. The same problem exists for the fork. And again, yeah, maybe I could print it flat and maybe I could even use a heat gun to shape it into the traditional shape of a fork. But no, I decided that the best thing to do with this would be to stand it up, to give it a broad enough base that it will sit on the build plate and then just print upwards like this. That would allow me to put the subtle, gentle curves into it that we expect. But we're running into a problem, especially with the fork. That is, as the layers go through like this, they're very small and very shallow and have very small contact with each other. So to combat that, I tilted the fork and the spoon and the knife just about 30 degrees, enough that the curve back and forth wouldn't make too heavy of an overhang that we could still print it without supports. But now the layers are going through at a diagonal angle, like French bread to increase the surface area that you can spread butter on, or in this case, to adhere the layers to each other. Plus, I kind of like what it does to the bottom here, instead of being a perfectly flattened squared base, which it could have been, instead it's got this kind of gentle angle that I hope will make it less painful to the hand when we're using for stirring. Although I might have just made it worse because it does make that a little bit more pointy. Still, I like it. I'm pretty happy with the design of the fork and the spoon. The bowl and the cup, well, those were extremely easy. There's nothing about these designs that are particularly difficult to 3D print. It just uh, The cup especially just goes straight up. The bowl with a little bit of a ring around the bottom. I might have pushed the overhangs a little bit on the bottom here, but the top came out fine. And, and I could have potentially just put a nice 45 degree angle here, but I worried that the bowls wouldn't stack. And, and I wanted my bowls, if I printed a lot of them, to stack well. Of course, I have to test the viability of one before I make them stack. But the plate presented an all new problem because you see plates, they aren't actually flat. Plates are actually just very, very shallow bowls. It needed to have a curve to it. And while again, I could have made the top gently curved and brought the bottom down at a 45 degree angle, it wouldn't stack that way very well. And I don't know, I just wanted it to be more like a traditional plate. So how do I solve that? Well, you might've already guessed the reason why this is an octagonally shaped plate is because I 
am standing it up on one of these sides and I needed a flat side. And so if I had one flat side, I might as well make the opposite flat and then we'll do the sides. And it just became an octagon. That also informed a little bit of the shape of the bowl. So this tableware set kind of has an octagonal feel to it. So all of these are more or less standing up on the build plate except for the cup and the bowl. But by standing them up, I ran into a problem, especially with the Yosu Pet G that I chose to use. I chose Pet G because it's very close to Pet, which is the sort of plastic that they use in, in milk jugs and water bottles, the sort of thing that is safe for long-term contact with food. I figured that would be safe enough for the short-term contact with food that I'm using these for. But this filament is probably the softest pet G that I have ever seen, which means that as these prints got taller and thinner, they were more likely to wiggle while they were printing. This caused print after print to fail and succeed just a little bit more. I had to put big brims on the bottom just to give them a surface area to hold on to, and even then they could only make it part way before they just exploded and fell apart. Yes, I figured out that if I slowed it down that it would print better, but even at its slowest speed I could get it to print almost to the top, but the very tips of the tines on this fork were so garbage that I just had to snip them off in order to get something, and even then the sides of these tines are just... it wasn't really what I was going for. So I decided to try an experiment. I was testing out the Flashforge Creator Max 2, and so I thought, you know what? I'll just throw the fork and the spoon at the same time at it and see what happens. And wouldn't you know it, it printed absolutely perfectly the very first time. Why? Why did the Creator Max 2 print this so perfectly? I'm going to borrow a little bit of terminology from my friend Ryan Carlyle's book, 3D Printer Engineering Volume 1. In this book, in the third chapter, he talks about movement systems, and he talks about the various different kinds of movement systems that are in here. He talks about the ZX, Y prime movement system. I really need to come up with a better way to say this out loud, but it basically says that the Z axis, the X axis are tied together and the Y axis carries the print with it as it moves. This movement system is common on perhaps the majority of especially cheap 3D printers. And why is this the movement system that they chose? Well, I can think of only one word that would answer that and it is shipping. When you take the Z and the X and tie them together, it's real easy. They just move up and down in a more or less flat plane, and you can take that flat plane off, lay it down in a box, and ship a 3D printer that ships in a very small container. But the Creator series of 3D printers has a completely different movement system that it inherited from the Replicator 1 that my friend Ryan calls the YX comma Z prime or XY comma Z prime. In other words, the printer head moves in the X and the Y while the print is carried on the Z bed up to the printer and then just straight down. The print, the, the actual physical print that you're creating isn't moving back and forth or side to side. It's just moving up and down and that makes all the difference. I've heard the ZX Prime Y sort of movement system called a bed slinger. And you know, I kind of think that that's appropriate. It's taking your print and it's flinging it back and forth and back and forth. And the result is, the result is that for especially soft materials like this Pet G, that your print gets some serious wiggle introduced to it. However, with the movement system of the Creator Max, the print head moves around, but the print itself remains, for the most part, stationary. Now, maybe you're thinking, come on, it can't make that big of a difference. But, you know, I didn't tell you about the plates yet. The first time I tried to 3D print the plate, the print came out kind of garbage, enough that I stopped it before it finished. Now, at this point, I had the plate oriented 
along the x-axis. So it was flinging back and forth in the bed, kind of waving like a fan, and I thought, well, maybe if I turned it 90 degrees so that it was moving like this, it would be more stable, but somehow that print came out even worse. This prompted me to try the Creator Max, and when I printed it on the Creator Max, it came out beautiful, perfect, and smooth, but um, a little bit small. The Creator Max's build volume is only uh, 15 centimeters tall, and while they say that if you eat off of smaller plates, you'll be likely to eat less, and let's be honest, I could probably use eating a little bit less. Still, this is this is a little bit too small. This is an hors d'oeuvres plate. This is a salad plate. So I decided to really give the Flash Forge Creator Max 2 a run for its money. I took the plate and I tilted it diagonally. Again, only about 30 degrees. Dropped it down into the build plate so that it would have enough purchase on the build plate. But it was at a precarious angle, the whole print. And I thought for sure that this print was going to fail. But the Creator Max 2 surprised the heck out of me. I mean, look at that angle. That should not have held fast, and yet it handled it like a champ. The way that the 3D printer moves absolutely makes a difference in the sort of things that you're going to be able to print with it. And if you try printing something one time and it just utterly fails, you will choose prints that you know will succeed in the future. In other words, by using a bed slinger, you are going to be limiting the things that you will choose to print. And that's kind of a shame. So what am I saying here? Am I saying that every 3D printer that moves in the X and Y and the Z just goes down, that they are all superior to a bed slinger 3D printer? Am I once again knocking on the Prusa for being a bed slinger? Okay, no, 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 no. I, I mean, the M3D moved its head around and the Z just moved up and down. And I was really unimpressed with the prints that came off of that one. No, I, I, there's more to it than that. What about a Delta printer? If we threw these utensils and maybe even the plate at a Delta printer, would it succeed? The bed doesn't move at all on those ones. The print just goes up from there. You know, I'd love to know. I'm going to make these files available to everybody to download on Thingiverse. And if you print it, I want you to post a make, whether it was successful or not. Tell me what 3D printer you used. Tell me what settings you used. Tell me if you slowed down in order to do it. I want more data on this because if through this experiment, we discover that yes, there is very clearly a superior design philosophy in 3D printing that we should be supporting more, Maybe we can move 3D printers towards adopting that more. Now, again, if you do do these prints, remember, we're just testing design philosophies. I don't necessarily want you to take these yet and try to eat with them because that's a discussion for a future video that I promise I will be getting to. So obligatory subscribe, ring the bell. I will be working on that in the future, but for now, let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Ugh, I either need a taller table or a shorter chair. Okay, here we go.